Needle cases, needle cases. Now, the one I put on my blog the other day that was for sale, which is now sold, thank you very much. Um, this one, it's lovely. Um, I've pieced another one. It's here. Okay. So what I was going to do just briefly with you today, it's all basted and everything. Um, I was going to choose a ribbon for a drawstring because this one has got a drawstring across there, through there. Um, and just to prove that it is a drawstring. And if you're the person that's bought this, don't worry, I'll be mailing it on Monday. It's Saturday today. So it's free. The ribbon's free and it pulls up. Just adds a bit of quirkiness, I guess. A um, bit of something unexpected to the surface. So I wanted to just choose a ribbon for this one, which is a longer drawstring. This extends across the whole thing. And also, this is another one I've got on the go, but this is part of my embroidery class. I'm making this in there with them. This is for me. I've got a workshop now separate from the house and I have to remember, because of an evening I stitch in the house when I'm watching TV, so I'll take my needle case through and blah, blah, blah. And then when I come through here to work in the day, often to make my videos for my classes, um, I forget things. So I think I need two of everything. So I'm making this one for me as part of my embroidery class. And this one will live in my workshop. I mean, it's not, I've got a thing about drawstrings, can you tell? This is an original vintage one. It was the original one that was in this lace edge. So that's another one that's on the go. So I'm a bit preoccupied with needle cases, I guess. Um, so if I put them to one side. So what I want to do is just choose a ribbon for here. I'm thinking orange already, you know, but then maybe I'm too fixated on orange. Um, if I get them both out. I've got a wider orange than the other one, so that's going to be too wide, isn't it? I've got the narrow orange that I've used in that other one, the velvet these. Um, that one. I've also got a green one that might again. It's going to be too wide, isn't it? Have I got a narrow green one? I don't know if I have actually. Oh yeah, I have. So. Hmm. Now this one is different to this one in many ways and also it will be affected by the colours I use for the embroidery. So if I move the wide ones out of the way and let me just have a look what else I might have. I don't think I've got anything else that's narrow enough. Um, I've actually got this gingham one, orange gingham. Well, there's something nice about the velvet, the rich velvet. I think I'm going to go with green only because I used orange in the other one and I don't want to be boring. So that doesn't go in yet because this isn't even secured. It's merely basted. Um, so yeah, I think I'll go with the green. These are all tangled up now. Put that there. Put these away. I love my ribbon box. I love my ribbon box. Put that there. So yeah, I'll go with that green, I think. So that'll go through there. Um, no, I haven't got any green thread in here. I didn't bring any green thread. I've got yellow. And I thought I brought orange back put it in this ribbon box. By accident, I bet it's gathered up with all this ribbon. Where are you? There, here it is. It is, it is, it is. In fact, so just give me a second, I've just seen something else in here. This, this is book binders tape. But this is really useful in this situation. Well, I don't think it's enough. I think the beauty of these is the vibrancy of them, that's a bit pale. So I'll just put those back now without gathering up my orange thread. So how I tend to work with these, um, so I've decided on the ribbon. I can put that back now. I know which one I'm going to use. So I'll come and uh, just start like putting 
colours you might not think you would use in certain areas. So, for example, this bit. In fact, this bit, this trim. Now, it would be really predictable, wouldn't it, to put French knots in the middle of that? Um, maybe bullion loops. Bullion loops. Um, or beads. Could put beads in there, but part of me wants green beads, and I don't have any of them with me. So I tend to like think, don't do the predictable. Don't go right in the middle and just do a French knot, because that, to me, is predictable. So I'll have a think about what I can do with that with beads. Um, maybe bullion loops. Uh, yeah. So, and that to me is crying out for green as well, um, in some form. So this has got kind of a greeny bluey colour. So I think orange might be nice on there because it would be a bit unexpected. So if I do some fringe knots on there, in orange, just you just see then how that might look. Hoops just the right size, which is good. Um, needles, huh. I'm making needle cases. This is my other needle case that I also made myself. I'll have to get a load of new needles, well, not new needles, but I'll have to stock, put different needles in my second needle case when I've got it going. So I won't start at the edge, um, I'll start here, then I can get a sense of how this is going to look against that red, that Liberty fabric. Um, it'd help if you could thread your needle, Karen. Put a knot in the end. So yeah, needle cases. Needle case is coming out of my ears, which is very good. It could be worse. I could have stressful, horrible things coming out of my ears. Needle cases are very peaceful and pleasing. Right, so I'll start here, then I can see how it'll look with that red as well. Um, is it strong enough to? to be allowed to be seen because that red is very strong as is this well actually it's quite subtle this ribbon but I just don't want the the knots to get lost no I think they're all right and then I could always bring in this vibrant yellow as well so if I do that and I fasten that off and then I'll do a lemon one in there and see if that lifts it even more. That's the challenge working with colour. Um, I'm sure a lot of you know that this, so much colour and so much pattern, it's getting a colour in your thread for your stitch that's going to be allowed to be seen within amongst everything else that's going on. So. Do a couple of lemon in there and then we'll see. But I'm not so satisfying when I'm making these and I do say when I've done this strip of ribbon, I just love taking the basting out. I just it's really satisfying to know that that bit is uh, done and finished and the uh, scruffy basting can be removed. No, I don't want to cover that orange colour. Just want to uh, enhance it. Yeah, I think. So that's five French knots in total, three orange and two lemon. And I think it's allowing the colour to be seen. I'm looking at the viewer of the camera, and normally I can't see that very clearly, um, but I can see that. I can see it from here in that viewer, so it is sufficiently vibrant. So it is going to live there, it is going to be fine. So rather than fasten that off, I'll bring this through to the next 
scalloped part ready to do another French knot. So a little, just a little play with there, a tiny little play and ribbon choosing with the needle cases. Okay. <laughs> 